guys good evening all so today we are going to see a chapter called chapter 3 unit 1 right that is theory of production and cost we are going to see the first unit that is production we call it as production okay so these would be the learning outcomes from this chapter and we'll be covering it production what do you understand by production normal understanding you tell me what is production according to you guys input into output very good tell me you have anything else input into output okay my mom right wakes me up in the morning okay beta class is there okay she wakes me up and then she puts tea and gives to me okay she is taking what to say milk sugar what to say tea no tea powder everything she mixes and give it input output production or not production production not production okay we have different answers why production why not production tell me so i am trying to uh, make you understand what is meaning of production and the economics okay production outside economics has different terminologies meaning under production i mean under economics has a different meaning to it right now let's read the definition simple def there are couple of definitions given in your book i have picked down the easiest definition for you to understand it first read it and any economic activity which converts input into output which is capable of satisfying human wants is called as production are we clear here so the one which i told you my mom right is an economic activity or non economic activity non economic activity you are saying what is economic activity what is non economic activity if i have to ask you economic activity means you will be learning this in bck but i'll tell it to you economic activity means you are doing it for money you are doing it for money okay non economic activity means low affection right all those things is called non economic activity same thing let's substitute with maid maid is coming and waking me up all right and she is doing the thing for me is it production yes it is because it's a economic activity yeah input is there she is giving you she is giving a service to you guys please understand here when we talk about production does not mean only goods okay even a service is a production okay that is why i asked you this question this covers all the bases so it is not only what to say now teaching is this a production yes my internal energy i am putting it as output right my labor energy even labor is input only no yes on that is what it is clear so which is capable of satisfying human wants something you should not create and it's no use <laughs> then it is not even production that pro output should be capable for satisfying someone wants then only it is a production these guys have de- uh, james and um, given their own definition you can read through them right essence is the same are we clear now there's another way to treat production there's another way to treat production the another name is called as creation or addition of utility creation or addition of utility what is utility satisfaction power right now let me give you a simple example if i give you wood plain wood i give you do you get some utility yeah, you can use the wood to hit <laughs> right <laughs> she is like ready already ah yes sir wood i can hit some utility you can get something right but if the wood is converted into a chair right you can set you can get more utility right that is what it is talking production can be defined as creation input can be output also right so creation or addition of utility are we clear here so when your input is wood right when labor and other things raw uh, in other factors put themselves the output can come which is addition utility 
we clear here so one thing this creation and addition of utility can be in four forms can be in how many forms four forms that we are going to see what are those four forms okay before we see those four forms certain questions to understand what we have discussed till now yes in economics dash refers to economic activity which directed towards satisfaction of human wants production right which of the following statement is true production can be defined as creation of or addition of utility conversion of raw materials into finished goods and activity of making something immaterial or d all of the above answer is a okay guys the important definition which you guys have would some would have missed is capable of satisfying human wants definition is that no so what is this an activity making something immaterial it is not production second uh, conversion of raw materials into finished good it is still not saying is it capable of satisfying your human wants or not okay by elimination only you are actually you are right this is sir why not if all of this was different no i would have gone with all of the above right it's a based on situation based questions okay you are right on it but they are saying it is not full the best answer is what yeah this is all tricky questions which they ask you choose the best answer right done production includes what what production includes does it include mining manufacturing service providing or all of the above what does production include it includes all of the above okay i told you service product everything production include don't fixate your mind that output should physical goods should come out and all okay that is one which of the following is considered as production in economics tell me which of the following activities is considered as as production in economics tilling of soil singing a song before friends preventing a child falling from manual okay painting a picture for pleasure answer is a tilling of soil tilling of soil means you are just okay that for agriculture or other purposes called tilling of soil done work profe- work of a professional like chartered accountants like us right does not result in any tangible output it is not a production activity in economics is this statement true or false they are accusing us oh, what happened they saying chartered account does not result in tangible output hence it is not production they are asking is the statement true or false answer is false here students are getting angry oh my god how can you say that it is false okay it need not be tangible even service is included are we clear here done now production i told you no creation or addition of utility it is of four forms it is of four forms we'll see what is the first form this is the first form utility form form utility all right what is this form utility first type of addition of creation of utility under production all right first is form utility changing the shape from one to another for a greater good like what we saw wood to a chair if it's a wood you will have lesser utility if you it changes the shape makes a wonderful chair you can sit and nicely uh, i mean sleep or sit relax right you will have more utility that is physical changing of the form of the natural resources that is form utility are we clear here second place utility changing the place from no to little use to greater use from no use or little use to greater use for example for example you can take uh, gold right gold is where it is underground only no Fr- there is any use in that uh, being underground but when you take it dig it change the form and then use it nice decoration items uh, you can wear it as earrings and all correct 
from one place to another place they are digging it up right that is place utility right or for example you can take uh, what do you say uh, if there is too much of apples kashmir apple only would have seen no in kashmir apple lot of kashmir apple if you if you keep everything there itself what will happen it will get rotten right rotten so if you bring it to chennai or bangalore you can eat kashmiri apple that is from no there is very less utility you bring it here people are ready to pay more for that right that is how it is that is also example of place utility are we clear any questions here no question. time utility making it available when they are not normally available making it available when normally they are not available that is time utility for example harvesting right when do you harvest throughout the year, year do you harvest on the specific period, uh, period for uh, what is a sowing and what is a reaping it out right harvesting right but that will be stored for for a longer period of time so normally certain times mangoes are not available but if you go to a shop he would have stored it and kept it for you right that is time utility making it available when it is normally are not available are we clear even if you see recorded classes right we are time utility you can bring it right we are not normally available i am not 24 hours available but i am recording it and giving it to you right that is also time utility right done personal utility personal utility making use of personal skills in form your chartered accountant work right or my teaching work everything is or your maid work right everything is personal utility okay this is how different forms of utility will come form place time and personal utility one important point is there can be uh, what do you say all four can be in one product or uh, what do you say two can be in one product or something like that for example let's say woolen clothes right from sheep it is becoming a, a cloth right that is form utility from kashmir let's say they bring it to bangalore that is place utility and they, they are storing it for you winter that is time utility in some services they are rendering support services right that is personal utility so some products can go through all the forms are we clear that is the main essence done see and one more thing here in this production chapter we are going to con- we are concerned about inputs into outputs right which are capable of satisfying human wants in production you sh- there are two aspects to it one is the output number of units number of units second thing is the financial aspects of it how much does it cost how much does it uh, cost to produce this much right in this production chapter you should be very thorough we are not going to consider the financial aspects at all we are only going to consider the physical aspects of it how much is the output are we clear here yes or no clear so that is the main this cost sir what about cost of production that we'll be seeing in the next chapter unit right theory of cost will be seeing that in production we'll be only talking about what to say what is the input and outputs and other factors right sure can i answer certain mcq questions dash dash utility refers to physical changes form of a natural resources this is very easy form utility yes dash utility refers to changing the place of a resource from place of a lesser use to place of a greater use place utility right utility is created by making goods and services available at times when they are not normally available time utility right dash utility involves making use of personal skills in form of services personal utility right when bangles and earrings are made from gold we refer to creation of what hmm form utility okay they are talking about bangles and made from gold okay they are not talking about the example which i gave was extraction of gold right that is place utility here what they are talking about from gold they are making into bangles that is form utility okay are we clear 
if apples from kashmir are made available for sale in chennai it is referred to creation of place utility one place to another place okay St- storing harvested food grains for use till next harvest is an example of what time utility work like professional like doctors chartered accountants are considered personal utility see how questions are asked understood done to uh, complete production all type of utility that is place form personal utility should be created true or false not compulsory so answer is false okay a uh, for a uh, thing should need not go through all the forms of utilities okay you can choose whatever it is depending on case to case are we clear now we are going to see a important term called factors of production this we saw yesterday if you remember last last class yes yes hey, today class itself we forget what's our last class you know okay factors of production very important term what is factors of production very simple it is considered as inputs what is called it is nothing but inputs for outputs you need no inputs that is so there are four types of factors of production how many types of uh, factors of production is there four types one is land second thing is capital sorry land labor second thing is land uh, first thing is land second thing is labor third thing is capital last one is entrepreneur okay entrepreneur now this land is the only natural resource other things are all what is it uh not natural okay they are all uh, human means L- labor and land is primary the other things are human made okay this for now just know it if you don't understand i'll come to the uh, point then i'll explain it okay just for information just know this there are four types most important thing which you have to carry is what there are four types one is land second thing is labor third thing is capital fourth thing is entrepreneur now we are going to study one by one what is land what is labor what is capital what is entrepreneur in detail okay before that video time right factors of production we know that the central theme of economics is scarcity it's about using limited resources to satisfy unlimited wants so what are resources well in economics When we talk about resources, it has to be productive, meaning we can use these resources to produce something. Suppose you want to sell awesome coffee to people. What do you need? Mm, maybe a cafe. So you got to rent some place. That's land, isn't it? You also need water and electricity, and of course, coffee beans. What's this? Raw materials. What else do you need to sell coffee? What about coffee maker machines? Cash registers for cash transactions. So these are machines and tools that help us produce our goods. In this case, coffee. These are also what we call capital. Tools, machinery, even factories are considered physical capital another type of capital is human capital it refers to knowledge and skills of people that enhance the production capacity for instance your knowledge on how to make awesome coffee is a type of human capital one question is money considered capital well In economics, resources have to be productive. Can money itself help you produce anything? No. Although you can use money to purchase resources like machines or coffee beans, 
money by itself cannot produce anything, so it's not considered as a type of resource. It is understandable that some of us may find this confusing, because we often hear news commentators referring investment capital or financial capital to money. Yeah, in fact, in our everyday lives, we often equate money to capital. However, money is not an economic capital. In economic terms, money is not capital because it cannot produce anything, like a machine does. Rather, money is an expression of value. With money, it is easier for us to exchange goods and services. Money serves as a lubricant for the economy. All right. Once you make coffee, you need to sell it, don't you? So you need waiters, you need labor, you need to hire people. With land, capital, and labor, what else do we still lack? Hmm. Who's going to bring these resources together? Who's going to organize this together and make it a productive enterprise? You. Yes, you. Who are you? Well, you are the boss, the entrepreneur. Entrepreneurship is also a kind of resource, as the entrepreneur bears risk and brings the other three resources together to make a business work. Without entrepreneurs, no business organization can begin. Okay, I hope your coffee business is successful. Before you forget. There are four types of resources, namely land, capital, labor, and entrepreneurship. Thank you. Yeah, clear with it, right? That is a good video for you to self-understand itself. I believe, right? But still, as our duty, we need to explain here and there so that you are cemented with your ideas. Now, land, right? Please understand. Land refers in economics. Land means all natural resources, gift of nature. It is not only square piece of land they are talking about. Let's say water, sunlight. Everything is natural, free resource. So these are considered as land according to economics. Are we clear here? Right. Now, what are the characteristics of land? We will see. This is little bit uh, what I say. We'll read through it. Is there in your book? And they'll ask you which of the following is a characteristic, or which of the following is not a characteristic. Those kind of questions are expected. Very silly, but you need to know. Okay, land is a free gift of nature. Self-explanatory, right? <laughs> land you cannot create. Land, land is from the what to say? Gift of nature. Supply of land is fixed. That is, can you create land? No. So the supply of land is fixed. That is what it means. Land is permanent and cannot be destructible. Right? You cannot destroy land. Is what they are saying. Right? Land is passive factor. What is this passive factor? Land alone cannot create productive functions. Can you say land? Ha, huh, produce uh, rice for me. It cannot do. Someone has to be there. What is it? Till the soil. Put the seeds, put water, then only rice will grow, right? So land is a passive. You also must sit like this. That is called passive factor. Are we clear? Land is immobile. What is immobile means? You cannot move a land, right? Land has multiple uses. Yes, you can use it for what is a uh, fa farming, or you can use it for industrial purpose, or you can build a school or a college, whatever you want. Different lands can be used differently. Land is heterogeneous. What is heterogeneous means different. Homogeneous means identical. Heterogeneous means different. So here land is heterogeneous. That means no two lands are the same. No two lands are the same. So land in Kashmir is same as land in uh, what is say Bangalore? No, different, right? The fertility might be different. The surrounding might be different. Lot of things are. That is the characteristics. Are we clear? Okay. Now, just for entertainment, right? Some students have asked me on this is what is given in your book, okay? But some students have asked me, land is immobile, sir. 
Anuman carried one land piece of land to another. His mobile no, sir. That is one he said. Second, same student only. He said, sir, they put atom bomb, land goes away, no, sir. Destructible. Third thing he asked, in Dubai, <laughs> they had one, what is it? Created an island, putting sand and all. And that is land created, no, sir. What, sir, you are saying? All wrong, wrong. Right? So, I had no answer for that. Right? This is what it is. Okay. I understand a lot of you have a lot of creativity. But creativity, <laughs> let's not show it here. Okay. Done. So, can we answer such questions? That is for only for entertainment. Please, this is the features of land. Okay. Don't say Anuman stories and all. You won't get marks. Done. Factors of production. Factors of production. Right, I told you. There are two types of factors of production. One is natural resource. Second is man-made resource. Okay. One is natural resource. Second is man-made resource. Right. Now, gold mines, right, is an example of dash factor of production. Gold mines. That is an example of dash factors of production. What is gold mine? KGF movie and all you have seen now what? Uh, full on. She's like, ah, yes, sir. Uh, waiting for KGF 2 also. Mm. Mm, tell me, what is gold mine? It is a land. Okay. It is a natural resource. Are we clear? That is why it's called as land. The factor of production, land is what? Fixed in quantity, variable in quantity, not quantifiable at all, not useful for production. Fixed in quantity, I told you, no, supply of land is fixed. That they are asking you in this manner. Okay, are we clear? Okay, now, as a factor of pro uh, production, land is dash means of production. dash means of production it is the original means of production okay originally from originality it's been there no human being is involved here okay it's god given gift right or nature's gift however you want to take it right so land and labor is a original factor but land alone is a natural factor are we clear so we saw this no land alone is a natural factor right but if you have to take original factor, land and labor will come into original factor. Are we clear? Yes. As factor of production, land lacks mobility. Lack of mobility means what? Lack of mobility means what they are asking. Can, land cannot be used for anything other than pr production of uh, rice. Land cannot be shifted from one place to another place. Which one? Or both A and B. Answer is B. Right? Which of the following is not a characteristic of land? Which of the following is not a characteristic of land? A free gift of nature? Characteristic. Supply of fixed? Characteristic. Active factor? No. It is a passive factor. So, answer is this. This is not a characteristic of land. Okay. Land complete? We'll go to labor. Now, labor, right? Labor is where means, what is labor meaning? Okay, it's not a human being. This has a different connotation. Any mental, okay, any mental or physical exertion, okay, directed to produce goods or services is known as labor okay now what is this mental exertion now i am what i am doing mental exertion only you know i am thinking what to teach and delivering the stuff to you right what is physical exertion means they put you know the coolies they put that uh, what to say side pack or a bridge and all if they are building they will carry that uh, stones and all that is physical exertion Okay, there can be two types of exertion. One is mental. Another thing is physical. Any of these two directed towards producing goods and services. Even if you are thinking, right, that is mental exertion. 
if you are thinking okay how to do, do how to do this uh, thing okay that is also um what is here decision making you are thinking right ceos and you have to take a decision you will be thinking that's a mental you are not doing anything that's a mental exertion that is also called as labor are we clear here any doubts now can we read the characteristics <laughs> okay uh, so one more thing here labor has one more condition that is you have to do physical or mental exertion towards with the motive of some economic reward money should be there okay if money is not there or not money alone some reward should be there for him to do that okay if reward is not there is done for love affection right your mother is worried or your dad is worried oh will my son pass ea foundation exam that is also mental exertion only no is it a product a labor no it is to love and okay done i am worried is it mental exertion is it called labor <laughs> to an extent both <laughs> you are paying fees also right at the same time you are what is it there is love and affection also huh done then characteristics we'll go to characteristic human efforts okay it involves human efforts human has to be there labor is perishable labor is perishable you cannot store labor you can't store labor's work that is what it is okay let's say today i cancel the class can i retrieve my teaching day today teaching day gone means teaching day is gone only i cannot restore okay once i finish teaching also you can't store it okay done labor is active factor see how am i moving so actively right i am the one who is making things happen here right so labor is normally active it's not passive labor is the one who goes and produces stuff right labor is inseparable from the laborer that means you cannot separate labor from the laborer can you separate my teaching from me no that is what it is are we clear some lame points but you have to read it anyhow labor power differs from labor power differ from labor to laborer so different people have different labor power right different teachers for example different teachers will teach different right that is how it is all labor might not be productive right productive means what you might work towards something but you might not lead to some productive activity right that is also there labor is mobile that is you can move around there is no rapid adjustment of supply of labor to the demand for it you can't da- increase the labor force or reduce the labor force immediately right that is what this meaning supply of labor cannot be can you hire labor immediately thousands of people no can you fire thousands of people immediately no other protests no will happen no that is what they are you cannot increase or decrease the supply of labor rapidly are we clear here now the choice between hours of labor and hours of leisure what is leisure rest which we like right so labor is the only guy who can choose between rest and work okay he can choose between rest and work are we clear here activities so can we solve some questions here activities done out pleasure love affection past time hobbies may be very useful in increasing the human welfare hence constituted as labor the statement is true false or partially true or none of the above what is your answer what is your thinking activities done out of pleasure love and affection past time hobbies may be very useful in increasing human well being hence it should be constituted as labor someone is uh, what i say arguing is the statement true false or partially true or none of the above answer is false labor should involve what reward right then is what it is yes to have an economic significance 
लेबर मस्ट बी डन विथ वॉट मोटिव ऑफ सम इकोनॉमिक रिवॉर्ड बी मोटिव ऑफ प्लेजर एंड सैटिस्फैक्शन और सी बोथ ए एंड बी और डी नेदर ए और बी आंसर इज ए मोटिव ऑफ सम दैट इज वॉट लेबर इज राइट नाउ एज अ फैक्टर ऑफ प्रोडक्शन लेबर इज अ डैश मीन्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन ओरिजिनल मीन्स ऑफ प्रोडक्शन राइट which is a which of the following is not a characteristic of labor a labor is not separatable from laborer correct labor is perishable yes labor is not a mobile factor it is a mobile factor okay and one for one for jokes only one that guy you know same that land guy who asked those he said labor is perishable la Sir, if I record your class, your recorder is there. No, it's not perishing. No. He asked me, "What? What? What can I say on that?" <laughs> huh? <laughs> okay. Are we clear? So that and all we know. You are not perishable, sir. He said. Oh, that. Let's ask and go for this. Generally, supply of labor and work are directly related. This is a new concept we are bringing. I'll tell you. okay generally supply of labor and wages are directly related that means what what are they trying to say here first interpret that supply of labor and wages are directly related that is wages go up huh goes up okay however however at very high wages rate at very high wages rate there is a pra- paradox paradox of reduction in labor this paradox is attributed to what first of all let me break it down the question itself we are some questions and all right fancy words they have used so let me break it down generally if you increase the wages supply of labors is more that is a general statement okay which is true but however they are change, putting one condition here at very high wages at very high wages what high is the i did not quantify what is high at very high wages there is a paradox that means opposite effect you should, you think it should happen but it's not happening that way that is that's called as paradox okay the opposite thing happens that is at very high level there is a reduction of labor why this effect why is this paradox happening is what the question is tell me the answer here is preference to have more rest and leisure right we would have seen here the choice between labor hours la- uh, between hours of labor and hours of leisure right here see when you are earning too much right uh, after some point you will be like okay why should i work more that mentality will come to you let me my health is also important let me work lesser hours right same money i am getting right now see what is the difference between one crore Mo- monthly if i give you one crore are you happy every month i'll give you one crore will you work first of all you will stop working ha huh? till one month is one crore you are coming and you will be happy will you aim for two crores and all you will not aim so you are choosing what leisure that is what it is okay at high wages these things will happen at normal wages increase these things will not happen right now i want you to answer this question also so- something related to that only so you can answer this more generally the supply of labor and wages rates are directly related however at low at low wages rate there is a paradox of excess supply of labor you're saying the opposite now are you reading it are you following you're saying generally increase labor or uh, i mean supply of labor and wages are direct proportion that is increase in wages supply will increase or wages decreases supply of labor will decrease 
this is normal sense what they are saying at very low level of wages at very low level of wages there is increase of supply of laborers they are talking about when wages are at very low level there is another paradox which is happening instead of people not coming to work more people are coming to work why is that happening are you understood the question here why what is this paradox related to tell me some more members of the family who are not working may start working workers may prefer to work to overtime to increase their earnings c both a and b d neither above huh answer is c okay answer is c first if you're earning very less amount right to feed yourself to feed your family you will start overworking that is one okay second thing is let's say in very poor background family you see everyone will work the what is a the what is a mo- mother will be going to do maid work right the dad will be doing some work child will be doing some work right all these things will happen because to bring that I mean at least some some base income should come for the family so more people will go and work that is what the paradox is are we clear see how economics is so interesting right at different different ways different different things are happening right that capital will move to the third factor of production capital okay capital now we are very clear that capital was not equal to money we as we saw it in the video okay why money is just a what is a median to get some resources but money on its own is not productive okay with thousands of money uh, you can have thousands of um, uh, crores of money but if you have there's no food well you can eat money no so who has the resource will win over the game so that is how ca- what is say economics also deals are you resources ca- classified as capital here okay now they are bringing another term called as re- let's read this first then we will go about it right capital as that a part of wealth of an individual or community which is used for further production of wealth what they are saying capital is a part of wealth what they are saying if this is wealth capital is a part of wealth which is used for further production of goods and services or for the production of wealth itself are we clear here this is what the statement now sir what is wealth you might have to ask let's read the definition for wealth right wealth refers to all the goods and services or human quantities which is useful in production and can be passed on for a value only a part of these goods and services can be categorized as capital because if these resources are lying idle they will not they will constitute wealth and not capital let's break it down now let's say you have you have a building you have machineries you have uh, everything uh, raw materials everything now you are use you out of three machines you are utilizing only two machines or one machine right now there are three machines to totally that is your wealth three machines you have let's say you have to produce a uh, coffee okay now you have three machines coffee machines but only two you are using your wealth is three but used for production is what is only two because two only can what is it you are using it and that is only going to get you more money or more capital right so that is what they are trying to say which is used a part of wealth which is used for creation of more wealth is known as capital are we clear here any questions here any questions here no capital has such is a stock concept i told you what a stock and flow concept before itself right capital is a stock option 
stock concept that is three machines mean three machines it's not going to be changing over a period of time three machines mean three machines only but using those three machines right say you are growing your business you can get the fourth machine right so the periodical income is a flow concept are we clear the periodic income is a flow concept capital as such is a stock option stock concept are we clear friends no doubts done so capital has different names we'll just read through it capital can be defined as produced means of production produced means of production so these arises out out of production activities or produced means of production or man made instruments of production man made instruments of production these are different ways they call capital right land and labor are called as original factors that is capital is known as is not an original factor right it is called as produced factor of production are we clear here capital is a produced factor of production any questions in capital here no questions so can i move on stock concept okay see i told you in the example there are three machines right capital is a stock concept are you going to change the machines is machine is going to change over a period of time it's going to be stagnant three means three only always correct or not that is why it's called as stock it's not going to vary over a period of time if something varies over a period of time we call it as a flow concept right if something is constant over a period of time it's known as stock concept that's it are we clear so three machines when you're using three machines capital right is going to be a stock but out of using those three machines you might get another machine your business is growing you might using these three machines you might get a return on investment right and buy one more machine right that return the periodical income is called as a flow concept that's all because that is going to be come every year you are going to make some profits or some income that is what it is for exam purpose know this capital is a stock concept the earnings is a flow concept right you should know flow concept means what what is a stock concept means then only you will understand this are we clear done types of capital types of capital can we come to this one yes now there are different types of capital right certain goods or uh, certain things will overlap everywhere for example building can come under fixed capital real capital as well as tangible ca capital okay so it it is not a very strict classification one same building can come under three types of uh, capital itself just what are the different types of capital you need to learn and the essence of it that is the major aspect of it first one fixed capital fixed capital in economics means which is durable and renders service over a period of time fixed capital means durable and renders services over a period of time for example for example let's say this calculator right can i use this calculator for multiple calculation or can i use it only for one exam for multiple exams i can use it right it is not only for one exam so this is durable right it can render service over a period of time right that is what it is is these are called as fixed capital anything which can be used over a period of time not a single use is known as fixed capital think it like that are we clear now circulating capital circulating capital means which can be used only once for example ink when you write an exam you are using ink pen let's say assume you are using an ink pen once you write that ink pen ink is lost can you use it again no that is circulating capital that is circulating capital which can be used only once for example another example is of petrol right seeds fuel all these are circulating capital these can once you are use them you cannot what is a reuse them whereas other things like tools 
hammer can use more than once yes they are a fixed capital single use means circulating capital these two are related are we clear here they are just classification these two are classification these two are classification these two are classification that is how classification goes are we clear now real capital real capital means physical goods anything which you can physical goods like building plant machinery and all those things are real capital they are physical goods anything which is physical you can see this is a calculator physical no physical real goods okay human capital means like your ability right for me now uh, uh, i have the intelligence of economics that is my skill i have teaching skills let's say this is my skill this is my capital we classify as a human capital this is skill right skill is also a capital only okay know how let's say i know how to teach this concept right that is also a capital only that will come under human capital this is not physical right this is a human skill and ability that will come under human capital are we clear so anything which is physical is comes under real capital anything which is human ability will come under human capital now for example uh let's say physic uh, buildings now buildings will come under what it will come under fixed capital as well as real capital buildings can be used over a period of time it's physical also so that is what i'm trying don't say ah this should go here this should go there don't put that one thing can be of many types okay but it should be physical it should be uh, fixed or it should be circulating or it should be real or human that is thumb rule it cannot be human as well as real okay it cannot be circulating and fixed should be one of those that is uh, clear that is why i have drawn arrows here okay now real uh, tangible capital and intangible capital what is tangible and intangible capital we'll see right tangible capital means which can be perceived by senses that is what senses means what you can smell you can taste right you can hear you can touch feel all these that means it is a tangible capital right can i touch this tangible capital can i i can feel it by my senses that is tangible what is intangible cannot be perceived by senses for example good will patent rights right why you guys joined are you pro because you know oh, good institute good will can you tangible i mean what to say quantify it no they have good ratings da that good will is built no can you that is also capital of are you pro only no yes or no can you quantify it can you touch it can you hear can you sense nothing so, but it is a intangible capital thumb rule is can you perceive by your senses tangible if not intangible are we clear now individual capital and social capital very easy if the property is yours individual capital property belongs to everyone right then it is social capital for example roads road is yours Government bus is yours. Social capital. Your house is yours. Then it's a individual capital. That's all it is. Are we clear with the types of capital, right? Any questions in this? No questions. Super. Now, there's another concept which they have brought in that is called as capital formation. They have just randomly given some concepts uh, in your book. There, there's no flow to it. right if you ask me why there is no flow to it they have put concepts as my duty to cover the concept i am covering it right but if you really ask me we should not bring these these things are not very much into a flow kind of a singing a song for you right but we'll read it anyhow capital formation what is capital formation let's read okay capital formation i'm going to call it as cf going forward all okay with that cf right means a sustained increase in stock of real capital in a country means a sustained increase what is sustained increase means which you can manage managed increase normally you will uh, score that much right that is what is sustained means right normal increase in 
द स्टॉक ऑफ रियल कैपिटल इन अ कंट्री ओके दिस इज अ वेरी कॉम्प्लिकेटेड डेफिनेशन विल सिंप्लीफाइड इन द सेकेंड वन सी एफ इन्वॉल्व प्रोडक्शन ऑफ मोर कैपिटल गुड्स लाइक machines tools factories which can be used for further production or cf is also known as investment basically cf means capital formation means what more capital that's all are we clear now what is happening cf is only happening i am investing and you guys are getting trained your mind your human capital is getting built yes or no so you are going to be the future capitalist right that is how it is right that is what investing in more capital to make more capital that is called as capital formation Co capital formation is also known as investment another name is investment for capital formation why is it necessary tell me why is capital formation necessary one you can say for replacement let's say after the, what is it Let's say how many years I live there. <laughs> okay, thirty, forty years. You need one more economics teacher, no? <laughs> so you have to replace me, right? So someone has to replace me. That is one. That is why I have to train you guys. You can come and replace me. That is one. That is called as replacement. So or innovation. Innovation, re-innovation. That is more. New new techniques we can. What is it? You you who knows? You might bring another set of videos. You will be playing. right reinnovation right so that you can constantly move ahead in the society but it is not only for these two right the one more important reason is also to create additional productivity capital additional productive capacity right there should not be only one teacher right there should be many more teachers then only lot more people can be trained right similarly i mean this is an example which i'm giving apply it in different scenarios also wherever you go there should be many more capacity building happen right that is what it is right higher rate of capital formation means enhance productive capacity which in turn increases the efficacy of production efforts accelerate economic growth and adds opportunity for employment so if companies are investing in businesses companies will reap more if they reap more profit they'll pump in again that money into the what is the environment right more growth will happen if more growth means more people will get more salary more uh, what is a uh, job opportunities more growth that is what it is so capital cf is very important if you look into it are we clear here done so how do you do cf how do you do capital formation first is savings first you have to save how these savings is determined by two aspect one is your ability to save and second is willingness to save what is first ability first let's say you have 10000 you are earning how much you can save your ability to save is only 2000 let's say right your ability to save but the second thing also you should be willing to save, save 2000 also right so these two important things first you have to save that's the first step for capital formation second step is mobilizing of saving what is mobilizing of saving availability of appropriate financial products and institution is necessary for precondition of mobilization of savings see now you are saved right you are saving there should be some instruments which you can save under no there should be fd there should be what is a a uh, mutual funds right you see all cricketers are coming and saying no mutual funds say hey subject to market risk and believe it that is all there right so those are all financial products which help you to mobilize your savings it's not in from your it's 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 useless if you save it in your pocket and keep it imagine everyone saves in their pocket and keep it will anyone get benefit of it so someone has to give interest for it no no one will give because you are giving it to someone you are giving you have financial products that is getting mobilized right second step is mobilizing of savings last step is investment once you give it to a bank right bank there is a government is allowing to banks to lend lend those money to business people or investors right and they what is it the entrepreneurs work 
and use that money for better utilization. Let's say I borrow 10 crores, right? I set up another, what do you say, IU Pro app, right? Then I, what do you say, we, we make that uh, business more profitable, right? And I give back the loan of 10 crores. I have made 11 crores. One crore is profit, right? Then I can share it to a lot of people. I can hire so many people in, on that behalf, right? So economy is growing. That is how capital formation is further. Are we clear on this? First step is saving. Second step is capital. I mean, mobilization of saving. Last step is investment. Can we read through it now? Questions. If a resource is being used for generating further revenue, it will constitute capital or wealth or both A and B. Tell me. If a resource is being used for generating further revenue, it will constitute capital or wealth or both A and B. It will use for capital. As a factor, yes, as a factor of production, capital is a dash means of production. Produced means of production. As a factor of production, capital is what? Perishable, permanent, both A and B. Perishable. Okay. Machines will get worn out, right? That is what it is. Capital formation means what? Sustained increase in stock of real capital of India. Correct. Produce production of more capital goods, which uh, can be used for further production of goods. Correct. Investment. All of the above. Right. So capital formation can be spelt out in three different ways. Which of the following plays a role in mobilization of savings? Banks, financial instruments, capital markets. All of the above. Right. Yes. We'll come to the last and final uh, factors of production that is called as entrepreneur okay who's an entrepreneur have you heard of this word entrepreneur who's an entrepreneur is a businessman you can take it as fancy word for businessman right now what does he do he is the person who coordinates everything so he can land do on its own labor can he do it on its own or does a uh, what is a uh, capital can do anything on its own no Everything they are combining, the entrepreneur is the person who is combining all these three things and getting the deal done. So he is the person who initiates the business and coordinates all the resources. Okay, that is one job. That is the main function of the entrepreneur, one of the main functions. Second thing is he bears the risk and uncertainty. He bears the risk and uncertainty uncertainty because law i mean it can go for a loss also no? yes or no? so he is bearing the risk and uncertainty last one is he innovates these are the three functions of the entrepreneur most important is innovation according to your book okay there will be a question which of the following is the important uh, function of entrepreneur innovation okay keep that in mind now there are certain objectives, enterprise objectives and constraints which you have to read. Okay, there is some two to three pages, they are given it to you. Okay, I am not seeing major questions coming from that, but we will run through them. And I have given you notes to read through it. If you read the notes, that should be more than sufficient for you to go about it. But we, I will discuss in brief, because this is very theoretical and, and self-understanding, right? Now, there are different types of objective. First, we'll see organic objective. What is the objective of any enterprise? Tell me. First objective. If you are starting a business, what should be the first objective? First is to survive. Right? What is survival? First to break even at least. Whatever you are putting, take it out. First, you have to survive. That is the first objective. Are we clear? The second objective would be what? will be growth and expansion that is profit or whatever it is that is the organic objective any business you take first objective would be to survive second objective would be to grow and expand are we clear here that is the organic objective 
so this is one objective second objective is called as economic objective economic objective there can be two types of economic objectives one is profit maximization in economics when when we are discussing we will always uh, what enterprise objective will look is profit maximization objective only we will not consider any other objective in economics we will only consider profit maximization objective when we decide on business strategies or economics terms every, everywhere we assume what is a profit maximization only in that view point only we will assume nothing else okay unless it is specified otherwise so profit maximization means what makes maximum profit in the number of units you are going to sell make maximum profit are we clear that is the strategy second strategy is sales maximization what does sales maximization means maximize the number of units you are going to sell okay maximize the number of units you are going to sell that is the two objectives under economic objectives now if you look into sales there are two types of firms and economic objectives one is owned by the entrepreneur entrepreneur himself imagine when you are starting your own business right you want profit maximization only right yes or no you want to max, max maximum profit only right yes or no will you make uh, what is a lesser profit you want to make no will you be bothered about how the work conditions are normally think about it you will not be bothered how uh, what is your going and work sitting in small office or you will not be bothered about how uh, what is a working long hours you will be bothered about what is a how do i maximize my profit will you be bothered about uh, what is a employees are not what is a their needs are not taken care of for example uh, they are not taken for a retreat or a, because the cost no if you have to take employees to uh, go a trip it's a cost to the company right so entrepreneurs if your business is run and owned by your entrepreneur he will not think like that he will think of profit maximization that is what is given in the paragraph you can read through it okay it's given in your notes but there are second type of companies which are joint stock companies which are big companies mncs we'll talk it okay big companies multinational companies from their point of view they'll always look at sales maximization not profit maximization they see when you are not owning the company normally you want to work in a good company yes or no you want some ac should be there yes or no when you are going and showing a friend hey i work in this company what a big company right you want atmosphere for that and all cost no yes or no for a good infrastructure you have to pay right ha ah, your good infrastructure you have yes or no you have to pay also right? you have to pay on that so infrastructure more cost is more right then that is not profit maximization no if cost is more because cost is more means your profit will come down right now you will take ha let's take everyone to go a trip yes or no because employee should be happy employee should be all uh, what is the josh right so they will try okay let us not be very clingy or stingy right to what is a make maximum profit let us make more sales let's expand more right let's expand more make more sales but at the same time let me rest and enjoy the uh, work also so that sales maximization is the objective of big companies which are not owned by entrepreneurs they are managed by managers okay that is how it turns are we clear here so this is economic objectives third objective social objective right let's read an enterprise should consist constantly endeavor to contribute quality of life of its community in a particular and social in general so company should not only go for what is a profit or sales maximization they should take care of the society in general also okay for example all the big companies do right they'll go and for, they'll have their own ngos you know uh, geo has its own reliance has its uh, ngo tata has its ngo right infosys has it so they will try to contribute something more to the society right so these are the objectives let's say for example 
to uh, what is a to give good quality products right that is one do not cause pollution all these things are social objectives you can read through it there are different points which are given it to you right these are all called as social objectives fourth objective human objective human objective so should be what to say take care of human resource that's what employees take care of employees is the human objective that is what to give proper growth environment right to give proper salary no what to say not to treat a, a employee as a what is a slave to make them what to say more enriching work should be given all those things a part of human objectives right last one is desh ka objective that is national objective so what are the examples to work towards ma- make in india for example so national objective right to give fair object uh, opportunity to the work and progress of all communities not only okay i'll give work only for this community if you are in this caste nothing like for everyone let let us work on that right or training the entire skill sets of human beings making them better employees all those things are national objectives are we clear here now while achieving these objectives there can be some constraint right what are these constraints is what we are going to discuss in a very brief manner lack of knowledge and information right sometimes we might not know how to make uh, what is a make sales maximization right how you know how to make sales maximization or human objectives can you achieve human objective you know how to make everyone people every employee happy there can be lack of information and knowledge how to go about it in achieving the objectives that is one in uh, what is infrastructure inadequacies that is you might not have the proper infrastructure to do certain things right like you might not have proper infrastructure to contribute to your society uh, air pollution you are creating but you do not have money to buy that infrastructure to prevent air pollution right that is one changes in business and economic conditions right certain times business conditions will change let's say corona comes immediately things might different might be different right the business conditions are different so this affects your objectives achieving your objectives inflation and all these are all object economic objectives only unfavorable rates and uh, changes inflation rising in uh, interest rate these all affect your what do you say objectives that is what it is other constraints like public interest you are doing something but public is like op- opposing no 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 you should not do that will prevent you from achieving your objectives these are the reason why you can't not all organization achieve their own objectives right some enterprise problems also are there which we are going to see what are these problems we'll see okay objective problem now see if i have to go for profit maximization can i achieve human objectives they are conflicting right so a- enterprise has also sometimes if i do this i can't achieve that if i do that i can't do this right it is conflicting objectives sometimes will conflict each other so that is a problem for enterprise that is one second location and size of plant right P- uh, enterprises will have a problem should i be near the raw materials or should i be near the customer for example let's say i am into selling uh, coffee beans right should i be near city or should i be near the uh, what is a coffee beans ma- agricultural land if i be near the agricultural land i can easily get the raw materials but i have to transport the beans to the consumer market which is long where should i be when near i can market it much more uh, easier if i'm near the customers but i have to go and get it so all these locations and size of size of the plant also should i be small slice uh, plant size or should i be big answers and all that that is what they are saying selecting and organizing physical facilities right this is the same as what is a size of plant should i have big machines or how many machines should i have what is the procedure right finance how much money should i pump into this business should i take loan should i uh, invest my own money or how do i manage cash flow 
right? What is the credit policies I have to give? All these are problems. Organization structure. Should I have a flat structure or hierarchical structure? Structure, right? How should my um, uh, what is the organization structure should be? Marketing. What should be the price? Product. Uh, what is the placement? How do I place my product? How do I position my product? All these problems will come under marketing. Legal formalities. You can't sell everything like that. No, you have to get government permission. You have to get va- you have to pay GST and all those things that can create confusion in on enterprise. Industrial relationship. You have to maintain when you are working in a business. You have to maintain relationship between everyone. Can someone go and fight with other? Uh, let's say I am in into business of uh, what I say, coffee. Can I go and fight with all the farmers? No, I have to maintain the relationship, right? Of a co- there is a union for coffee also. Let's say there might be unions, right, to represent their own concern. So I have to maintain relationships. All these things are. how to maintain all these pro- reasons are problems for enterprise problems okay this is a little bit theoretical you can read notes i'll give it to you i have given it to you already right read from that that is more than sufficient right not major questions are asked here but anyhow we'll solve certain questions after this question we'll take a break much awaited i guess right done the most important function of an entrepreneur is to what innovate right i told you entrepreneur is what is a catalyst in the process of using the factors of production or gives direction to the usage of other factors of production both a and b function of entrepreneur includes what initiating risk i mean uh, business risk bearing as well as innovation that is all of the above innovation theory there is some innovation i i'll give you a list call who said what who said what okay some people would have said certain theories like for example sankap peter right said innovation theory of a entrepreneur okay it was propounded by this guy so i'll give you a list who said what okay this guy said this so before the exam read that that is more than enough right profit making is objective of what economic organic economic right to enable employees a good working standard condition maintain work life balance is a what objective human objective right which of the following is a national objective to remove inequality and opportunity provide fair opportunities to all the work and progress to ensure uh, uh, yes to ensure enterprise output does not cause any type of pollution at is a what objective social objective okay this is given uh, what is it these are straight from your books for example right you can take it read that that is more than enough right are we clear so so we'll take a break now and see you later